Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be reflecting on a piece of underscore history as we go back in time and uh, recreate the cloth flag simulation from one of my earlier videos in uh, an updated version of the engine in 4.25. This is the, the latest point release as of time of recording because I get a, 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 quite a few people coming to me saying that they can't make the flag work, that the, the, the functions have changed, you know, the layout of the engine has changed. So I went back and I rewatched the video and I noticed that well, it has a little bit. So we're going to go back over it today and hopefully clear up any sort of misgivings. But I'll leave a link to the uh, to the original video down in the in the description below. Definitely do check that out because I'll go into a bit more detail about how uh, certain things work. For the purpose of this video, we're just going to get straight into making uh, making the flag work. And I thought I'd start here. So I've just gone and imported uh, the original flag and texture from the original video. Uh, as a skeletal mesh, so it's auto-generated a skeleton and a physics asset. Remember to check that box when you import. And I've just made a couple of materials for it. For example, the flag, which is just one texture, and another little simple material for the uh, for the pole. So you can just replicate those with the same files. I'll also put a link to, to download these assets in the description. They're also in the description of the other video. Uh, so, you know, there's no shortage of assets going around. All right, so let's start here. Let's uh, open up our skeletal mesh and see what we're dealing with. Uh, so as you can see, here's our flag. We can't see the back face because it's currently got a one-sided material to it. Uh, remember to check that box in the in the flag material too. Um, but let's just put in E4 flag. And we want our pole material. Oh, I've got the wrong way around. All right, so we want our pole in material zero. Here we go. And our flag. There it is. In, uh, in element one. All right, so we'll just save that. We're done here for the minute. Let's just go back to our original files, open up this physics asset that was generated when we imported the flag, and let's clip it up here. As you can see, uh, there is an automatically generated capsule collision here, but it's not uh, not anywhere near as tall as we needed to be. So we'll just hit R to change to scale, and we'll just make this guy fit the length of our pole. And by the way, this is the same thing that's going to happen. Uh, for example, uh, people ask me, well, what about if you have like a cape for your player character? You do it in the exact same way. Like in your player rig, you'll have a mesh that would be the for the cape. And you would use this exact uh, same process. Because like a cape on your character, it has to be within the same uh, physics asset as your skeleton. So let's head back to our... Uh, or actually, well, we better save this first. And then jump back to our skeletal mesh. And we can actually make the cloth... Um, mechanism you know work uh, the first thing we need to do is check this box up here enable selecting mesh sections then we click on the flag which uh, i guess you don't see anything oh hang on i've disabled it so we enable selecting mesh sections click the flag there we go it's got the outline back then right click it we need to create clothing data from section it'll automatically have its own physics asset in this little physics asset uh, entry here then we hit create nothing will have changed on screen but let's left click our flag again right click Go down to apply clothing data and check the one that we just made, which will be flag clothing zero log zero. There we go. It'll take a little while to compile again, but now we can head over to the clothing tab, select our clothing data here, and then click this paintbrush, and we can paint our uh, skin weights. So this will affect uh, to what degree or, or sort of how flexible the material is going to be, like how, how, how loose uh, everything from zero, which would be like silk, you know, a very light uh, material, all the way up to you know, something something very, very rigid. Uh, the way that we manipulate this is down here in tool settings. We'll see this paint value. I tend to set it to something quite high. Uh, it's all relative anyway, all relative to zero. So we can just paint on here. I'm gonna paint all the way up to the pole. And we can see that representing one in the white color here is uh, everywhere that's going to be moved. And the pink, which you can see over on this far left uh, edge here, isn't going to move. So it's gonna sort of hang from the from the flagpole from this far left hand edge and once we're finished here we just need to click this paintbrush again and there we have it there we can see the effect working just fine of course it's just uh draping straight down so we can sort of play around in here in fact if we go back to clothing uh let's get our paint mode back again if we pick a value something lower something like 0 0.5 and then we paint over like this we can see how this is going to change the behavior of the cloth <laughs> so it's very close to zero so it's just sort of suspended there in space but if we set it something a bit higher how about 50 um here we go so we're not quite not quite as high as we were at before and save that disable see it's not going to get the full 
uh, the full kind of effect, the full range of, uh, of motion, but a much higher number, like a thousand. And we paint it again, coming all the way up to this left hand edge, save, and I'll check this box. We get our nice droopy flag. And now we can go back to our content browser here, or rather our, our editor window. We we'll drag this little mesh into the world here, and then up in our place actors uh, window, which you can also find, uh, where is it here? Editor modes? No? Yeah, there, there it is here, this uh, place actors with the tick. Should be on by default. Uh, it used to be called modes, and you used to be able to switch between um, like landscape and foliage and everything. And now they're up in this uh, top bar here, so we can change this to uh, like the sort of whole editor, editor, <laughs> editor interface. Anyway, we, what we want is wind. Sorry, I've started to ramble lately. We'll put in some wind direction source, and then we can set some values such as we'll put the strength up to like five, speed to five. This will give us a, a good look at some some wind here, and let's see, we'll make the flag blow to the right, turn it around so we're not sort of wrapping around itself, and then when we hit play, then we have a nice, very gusty, windy flag being affected by the by the wind source there. If we set the wind source to something quite a bit lower, um, let's see if we set the speed lower, but the strength is still quite high, sort of get a bit get a bit more gusty. But anyway, these are all things that you can play with. Um, and uh, I encourage you to check out a couple of my other videos on the topic. I made a randomized wind um, little little mechanic, which I think is still quite cool and uh, and will definitely work in, in in the modern version of the of the engine. But anyway, uh, I hope you guys uh, got something out of this. I hope this was useful to at least some of you. Uh, as always, the easiest way to get to me is on Discord. I'm lurking there most of the time. And uh, other, other than that, uh, I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.